We worked so hard at the back half of the split. Now, Destiny is in our hands again. Let's seize it. Oh, the flash from Fragas brings him in, but look at the healing, he doesn't care. Jig the Toss will knock down the Nexus. They will be the eighth and final team in the playoffs taking down CLG. Dub, 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 dub. So during week eight matches, we came into the week expecting to put out some like quality games. We honestly expected to go 1-1, but we got smashed by Team Liquid. We were just really off that day. And against Immortals, like we had a free win, but we threw it so hard. So our playoffs run got so much harder. It feels really bad to come into practice that week knowing that we put ourselves in this position. I would say it's healthy to feel frustrated. It's healthy to feel that drive to want to perform better. However, all the players do have their eyes on the goal to win this weekend, and we just need to make the most out of it and bounce back. A little bit of a morale boost. Wanted everyone to say hi to the puppy and uh, hopefully bring some good vibes with it, and everyone enjoys our company. She's very active, so she always wants to be playing with someone. Yeah, whenever Bra's dog, it was pretty nice to have. I've never seen it before. We've always seen it on camera whenever we're doing like interviews and stuff or like, meetings. It was pretty good for the team. Everyone put in a lot more work. Everyone was just focused more and we were working as a team more. Yeah, it's always nice when pets get involved. I mean, I'm a huge dog person myself, love animals. So it was great to have Luna around the office. It's always fun to play against players that you've coached before. We just played against Huni the other weekend. Now we're going to play against Falcon on C9, who, even though they've been struggling, he's been performing really well throughout the whole year despite the past few games. So I do expect Falcon to, you know, perform like a top player in the LCS like he usually does. I mean, our mindset is obviously going to be a hard game against Cloud9, but of course, just got to try our best to win still. Okay. Yeah, my big thing is we're taking it to these guys early. And that means we play for what we're saying we're playing for, we get the f out, we get our advantage, we come back on the map, we play for something else. This team will punish mistakes if we do it. So I just want to get that in your guys' head before we get in, into the game today. We all have insane strengths. Like, you guys have such good players. You guys know how to get advantages. Let's just make sure we're calm. Let's make sure we're calculating in terms of what we're doing next. But as long as we're like optimistic, we're looking for the next thing to do, we don't have to feel too pressured. Like, you guys got this. We're good players. Dig on three. One, two, three, dig! This is perfectly in range. Can Barrage comes down. It's going to slow Dardock in, and we're going to get an alcove dance. No, Licorice tries to stay within his barrels, gives the thuns up, and he gets slept right here as they go in for this one. <laughs> a nice kill from Dardock. First blood for the Lilia. Ooh, Blabber's in a bad spot as Vulcan wants to stay to keep him alive, and he does a nice job as they flash back to four strong right by Tribrush. But it's going to be Phoenix bringing him in with a showstopper, and the kill goes over to Afro Moo. Yeah, not done gonna yet. Blabber. Oh, Blabber gets a little greedy there, stays on the front as he gets caught up in crowd control. And now C9's getting pushed out. Licorice tries to step back forward to get a barrel shot on. That's going to be the Rangers' focus coming in for the double kill on Johnson's Ash. He goes deep on Niski. Is he going to be able to get the kill? Dardock may not be able to finish him. And Niski just 1v1's Dardock on the sleep initiation. Cloud9, they get the triple kill. They oh have the Mountain word. Soul Rift. They're going to try and end it off of that. The death timers are so long. I'm up there. I think you can't do anything about the first one. Yeah. Actually, no, it's just game. Uh, that's game right there. Uh, oh my god, Cloud9 had to work for this win so hard. That was way more fun than I thought we were going to get. What a game to start off Friday wow. Night League. What a game. <laughs> Against the C9 game, a lot of it was just decision making that we had. We weren't on the same page a lot of times together. Our late game decisions were very off. We were really indecisive when it came down to team fights, when it came down to pretty much everything when it was late game. And we just got smashed at the end. We made a Baron call and then we lost off of it. But it was a good call. It was just everyone was on different pages, so it looked really bad. Feels pretty bad to have to rely on other teams to lose their games in order to make it to playoffs. I've never been in a position like this before and it's usually in my team's control to, you know, control their own destiny. But at this point, based on our past performance, we just need to hope that some teams lose and we perform well and then we can make it to playoffs. And once we make it to playoffs, then we have more time to focus on ourselves and improve. So going into the 100 Thieves game, I knew that like this is it. This is our last game. I can't lose it. I 
we just, I don't, I don't want to go home, you know? I don't want to end on a bad note, first of all, because I feel like I've had a really bad year, like my worst year so far, and I didn't want to end like that. So all of these thoughts came to me and I didn't want to lose. I wanted to be 100 Thieves. I wanted to have a good performance. I mean, our mentality was same as always, at least personally. I mean, there's more pressure to the game knowing that we could be out of playoffs if we lose, but we were all extremely confident in our matchups in the 100 Thieves game. So we knew as long as we had a decent draft that we would be in a good spot to win it. All right, this is it. Give me all of your energy for this game so that you guys can keep control of your destiny. There's absolutely no reason to believe that you guys do not have the talent to make playoffs. You guys clearly have the talent. You guys clearly have the drive. And I want to see it on the rift today. So give me your all. Give me every single ounce of energy you have for this game, and we'll let the cards fall where they may, right? But I want to see that effort, that drive from all of you that we strive to have the entire year so we can fight for that playoff spot. One, two, three, day! It's the steakhouse here in the LCS. Can 100 Thieves give themselves the upper bracket? Can Dignitas grab themselves at least temporarily a playoff spot? It is do or die from the yellow and black jerseys. We'll see if they can do it. Someday forced to flash. You know, Viper is back up in the top lane now, but oh, he's in trouble. damage on Boom, he's already burned the heal. One on, will kill him, he gets the stand troll, and that's gonna be just enough. That is a huge lead in the bottom lane for Aflamu and Johnson. Dignitas have a hard way out of this one as there's Tempered Fate. There's Aflamu to be stunned up, but not just yet. In goes Johnson, more damage onto Boom. He's running out of health. And Johnson takes him down onto a rampage. Someday now one versus four. He's running out of time as well. Double kill comes in for the Ezreal, and there's just not a enough damage to chunk down these champions. Because Woo! he's not gonna come fight. He might just be dead. Afro's gonna tank the shot, but he's not quite gonna land from Graves. Can he go for the steal? He probably shouldn't even try. This might come through, but again, Viper is in the base. He's going to try to end it, and True Shot Barrage gonna stop all the recalls. They're going for it now! Dignan Toss can fight for in the lineup! And he won him the game! Dignan Toss is still in the running for playoffs! Very scary. Like, if I lose, I lose, but if we win, just have to hope CLG goes. Loses both games this weekend, so today and tomorrow, and uh, IMT doesn't go too old either. So we just have to force a tiebreaker somehow, you know? Honestly, the moment we beat 100 Thieves, I knew that we're just gonna make playoffs. Because we were tied with CLG and they were about to play C9. We were a hard one through one comp, so the end game was pretty much Camille on side lane, and we were just first trying to steal the Baron because I would stop them from getting the enhanced recall to get back to base, so. That was the first plan. When that couldn't happen, then we just tried to stop as many recalls as possible. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We ended the game because we canceled their bases. It was definitely a relief. The game was really stressful, and I think our comp was a lot harder to execute, and we were required to play a lot better than the enemy team to win that game. So yeah, definitely the main feeling is relief after that one. So all the stars aligned pretty much, and all our like best case scenarios happened. If TSM could hey, step yeah, up hey, and yeah. challenge them, Otherwise, it's the second seed for Cloud9. I was happy. I mean, I expected C9 to beat CLG, of course, you know, given this team, you know, this like the team skill difference, but I was really happy, of course, to see them win. Both teams lost their games. That's what had to happen. They both needed to lose both their games. If CLG won one game, they would have made playoffs. We wouldn't have. All that added up, and we got in a tiebreaker scenario. So yeah, IMT just won, so we only played one tiebreaker against CLG. We win, we win playoffs. I was honestly really confident. I knew CLG's play style. They put in pole belter. They just wanted to play, like this team just wants to play topside all the time. We knew that if we take out Gallo against them, they're just gonna go Gallo Camille no matter what. So if we take out that champ against them, it's gonna be like a really free game for us. When in you're in, it's really as simple as that. We worked so hard at the back half of the split to make sure we get this opportunity. Now, Destiny is in our hands again. Let's seize it. Show them that we're the better team, that we deserve to be in playoffs based on how this roster is performing, based on how you guys are starting to acknowledge each other, listen to each other, and work together. If we do that, we're gonna be in playoffs, no problem. Ready? 
One, two, three, day! Thank you very much, Dash. It is time for the last regular season, in quotes, game of the split and of the year. It is to determine who the last team in playoffs will be. CLG versus Dignitas. How much pressure does CLG get topside? How much can Dig alleviate that and win elsewhere? With Dardock on the Olaf, Fragus may well be slowed a whole bunch. He's already going to be drowsy. Wait a couple of seconds. Now look at the rest of the slows. He's going to punch, but Fragus is going to lose his life for first blood, and Dig couldn't have for a better start to this game. Riftailed is ready in Dardock's hands as well as he takes the fight with Fragus. Oh, the flash from Fragus brings him in, but look at the healing, he doesn't care. Looking to get the kill on the Phoenix versus Stopwatch and Ruin kills Aphromu. The fight begins, Johnson's gone as well. Stixay is tiny, but he will go down to Dardock, trying to 1v9 this game. Viper finds himself a kill as well. Back in the fight, being chased down. I'm running him down, go for it. Come here, Zami, come here, Zami. Come here, come here. Let's come in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You guys can still go, you got it. Uh, knock down the Nexus. They will be the eighth and final team in the playoffs taking down CLG. Dub, 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 dub. I missed the playoffs one time in my life, man. But, wow. I'm so happy, man. Yeah, didn't expect us to make it, but we made it. Well, I just want to know, what was it this week that allowed you all to pull through and secure this playoff positioning? Honestly, the vibes were not great after the C9 game. We were really stressed in the Hunter Thieves game, but you know, I think we did well under the pressure of the Hunter Thieves game and came in today with a lot of confidence. So we ran a draft that we had a lot of faith in and panned out well. That was my favorite game of the split. Not because we won, but because that game, it felt like we all had each other's backs with our spells and with our cards. Let's ride this momentum. I thought we played really well against Cloud9. We were really close to taking it. We played really well yesterday. And then today, it was pretty much almost like a super clean snowball besides the Baron situation. Definitely feels good to make playoffs from an 08 start. As far as what it means to me personally, I think lets me continue playing. And that's like what's most important to me as a competitor is that I continue to be able to play important matches. So. Looking forward to our best of fives. Our team in a best of five, I think, will be really flexible. We're going to have a lot of different picks going on. We're not just going to have one play style that we can play. So I think we're going to be a pretty good best of five team. I've always thought we've had a good chance of beating any opponent that we've met. So I would say the same for BO5. I'd say we're not a surefire win. We could lose a series to any team, but I think we could also take three games off of anyone. I mean, to the fans, of course, thanks for sticking with us from 08. You know, eighth seed is not exactly the best place to be. It's not exactly uh, an achievement by any means, but it is an opportunity to do something better with our season. So hopefully we can do that for you guys.